excited to be here in the middle of June instead of the end um, because I'm here to tell you all about my first fiber festival. It was so much fun and I bought some things that I'm going to show you mostly just so I can share with you these wonderful small businesses so you can go look them up if you're interested as well and then I may I plan on trying to drop spindle for the first time. It's gonna be fun, hopefully. <laughs> I mostly just want to try drop spindling for the first time because I have not seen that video. As I like research drop spindling, I I love seeing people actually spin with it and seeing it in action. But it does look very graceful, it does look very experienced. So I just thought it would be fun to document my first time trying. And if it's really bad, then I can tell you about my experience trying to find an online class. <laughs> so yeah, so I went to the Hoosier Hills Fiber Festival on June 3rd and it was so much fun. It was in Franklin, Indiana, so it was a little bit over an hour away and I got to go. My husband took my son for the day and I, I just went for a little under three hours and walked around. A few people commented and said that it's a little bit overwhelming and I completely agree. There were so many vendors and I was even told that that it was a small festival, that it was a small scale festival and there were so many. They had three buildings and vendors in each building and then they had two outdoor trucks like yarn trucks it was so much fun one was the truck was more about adventure and like that was how they were branding their yarn business about adventure and traveling then the other one was more like ice cream truck vibes they had little ice cream cones with like yarn inside it was adorable i took a video so i'll overlay that so you can see how cute it was and you can see the other like yarn truck in the distance too but um, it was really fun I went in with a game plan I knew what I was gonna buy and, and about how much money that I could spend um, so I just went through all buildings and I was looking for a drop spindle or a Turkish spindle um, looking for some fiber I had no idea what to expect for the price of fibers because I've never shopped for it before so I was I was looking at all three buildings to compare and then I was also wanting to just get one hank of sock yarn so um, it was really fun I went through I browsed through all three buildings took, taking pictures of what I liked in all three and then went back and made my finalized my decision and made some purchases so it was really fun um, I'm gonna show you the I got a Turkish spindle. Um, it's by Shepherd's Woodworking. But it's natural shaft with a very red toned wood. So I bought this. This is Shepherd's Woodworking and you can buy his um, spindles. He makes more than just Turkish spindles. Um, so I'll, I'll link all these small businesses down below so you can find them. But he makes this one especially for uh, Kathy at Dream, Dream Weaver, Weaver's Fiber Arts. Um, and this is where I bought this one from. They had, she was the only one that I saw that had Turkish spindles at her store or at her booth. And I saw a few drop spindles, but none that I really, really loved, I guess. Um, and then Shepherd's Woodworking also, he also had a booth there, but his Turkish spindles were like special order. So you could pick out what kind of, I don't even know what this is called. Whatever it is, you, know, you could like pick out this, you can make it a different color. You could like, um, like yellow, green, natural, and then you can pick out the size and the weight. But 
but I just went with her. She really, she had a few different, she had more of like a natural wood color and then this red color. Uh, she doesn't know, she doesn't know how many ounces it is and she was so kind, like she was just so kind. She went ahead and like attached a leader for me, showed me how to do that and then she, all this yarn on here, she's just fun for me, letting me see um, her process, how to weave it over these little arms and how to do like a hatch, a hatch look, a hatch, oh, I forget what it's called. A half hitch, how to do a half hitch. <laughs> yeah, she told, she showed me how to do a half hitch and so this, I've been dying to spin on it, but I haven't yet. Um, so, and she also gave me this free fiber, like sample fiber. So this is Border, Border Lester. I could be getting that sheep read wrong, but this is Border Lester. I think it's like the border. I don't know if that's the official name. I'll write it on the screen if I can find it, but she gave me a decent sized sample and she showed me how to pre-draft and then she showed me how to park and draft, which is the method that I'll be using because it's easiest for beginners. Um, so that was really exciting. And then she also gave me a little sample of BFL, Blue Faced, Blue Faced Lester. It is so soft. It's really soft. So I'm excited to try this one day. In the Respect the Spindle book by Abby Frankemont, she does she doesn't recommend a specific um type of spindle or a specific weight of spindle or a specific uh type of fiber but she does give some recommendations so and she had mentioned just like to get a few different types of fiber because if you don't like one try another and your preferences could change and so i don't know how many ounces that spindle is I'm thinking as soon as I'm done with that, I'll just take the yarn off and weigh it, and then I would know, I think, so. Um, but yeah, she, she was fantastic. She was so nice, so helpful. Um, I just left her booth with a giant smile on my face because I just got a spindle with some sample fiber, and it was, she was so kind. So I'll leave her information below, of course. But to show you some of the other fiber I got, um, I'm gonna put this up close. It's two-toned. Um, this is a Lincoln Folk Wool, 2.1 ounces. And on here it says coffee and muffins. So I'm, a, I'm guessing that's the sheep name, which is just really cute. <laughs> I, I could be wrong. Um, but this, this woman, I was at their booth, um, Case, I believe is her name. Yeah, Case is, is her name of, I don't know how to pronounce this, Aore Maith. It is Irish for Good Shepherd, and, um, and she's Irish and she is a Christian as well, and so her... Uh, just the verse behind her brand and like the mission behind her brand, I guess, is John 10, 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Um, so this is really fun. I met, she, she was kind of a combo booth. I think they know each other. There was also the same lady, a different lady in that same booth was Tracy at Wayne Trace Farms. Um, and they were, they were like, we're using the same payment, like if you bought anything from Case at Aore Maith, sorry, butchering that, but if you got anything from Case, it was like on the same payment as if you bought something from uh, Tracy, so um, they were lovely, they were so nice. They were actually the first ones that I stopped and asked specifically about fiber, because, and respect the spindle, she does recommend that you start with um, carded and not combed. I think that's right. 
I think it's carded and not combed. If I have it backwards, I'll write it. But, and so I like took screenshots of just to help me as I was picking out some things there. And, but ever, I didn't see any, anywhere. There was no fiber that was labeled as carded or combed. I saw roving and I saw braids. And so I like, she was, had a down time in her, in their booth and she was really nice. And so I just asked her like, could you explain this to me? I showed her the screenshot of the book and I said, she recommends carded, but I'm only seeing roving. And she explained to me that roving is another name for carded. Um, and so then the whole, the whole festival was basically open to me and I had all these options because there was so much roving fiber, but, uh, and she, she explained to me, or she just helped me, um, see that she really recommended this one. And so I wanted to support them. I loved her business. I loved that she was Christians. I loved that she was just so nice and really kind, helped me so much. And so I wanted to support them. So I got this little ounce to try Lincoln Folk wool. Um, the last place I bought fiber was Wool Woolly Knob Fiber, I think is what the business was called. They didn't have business cards that I saw and I can't find them on Instagram or just even a website. So I'm just going off like the receipt that I was like um, texted, but I got four ounces of Romney fiber, undyed, all these are undyed, um, that was another thing that the Abby recommended from her book, is to get undyed fiber, and I just thought it was beautiful, I got, like, this little natural beige color, and then I got some, like, white and really dark, kind of a smoky gray, but also some brown in there, and then I got the light gray border, and then some cream BFL. So like, I love all the natural, that I was able to get some natural variation. Yeah, so this is four ounces of Romney, and they were great. They had these like balls everywhere. They, they just had a ton of fiber, and their booth was very busy, so I didn't get to talk with them, but I was able to ask them like what kind of um, fiber from what type of sheep and they showed me all around me. So I was really excited to try some around me eventually. So there's that, so that's all the fiber that I got. And then I also got some sock yarn and a few notions. So I'll start with the sock yarn. I just got a this is exactly what I was looking for. Um, there were so many, like, of course, so many booths with such beautiful yarn, like hand-dyed yarn, bright colors, just very beautiful, beautiful colors, beautiful speckles and stripes. But I was really wanting, I think I mentioned in my last podcast that I was just really, I really loved the intricate socks, and so I wanted... I didn't want a speckled, um, yeah, a speckled variegated sock yarn. I wanted just a neutral or a tonal. I wanted a tonal, but I was hoping also for it to be neutral because I want to try lace or cables or something. And I think that I, after working with a very dark yarn on my Ozetta cardigan, really black yarn, uh, and not being able to see the details at all, which is kind of nice because when I make a mistake, it won't show up too badly. But um, I really wanted to see the intricate, like intricate details of the sock. So I was really looking for a light tonal yarn. Um, this is Ash and Bumble. It's an 80-20 um, superwash merino wool and nylon. It's two ply and the color is lace. Uh, what was so fun is she is she works out of Indianapolis, Indiana. That's where I grew up and I don't live there anymore. But it was it was just so fun to like connect with her and we had very similar 
I just loved all of her colorways. They just were more nature inspired instead of like bright and beautiful and colorful. They were more nature inspired. She has a Anne of Green Gables colorway that's coming out in June or July. I can't remember, but she previewed it. None of that yarn was for sale, but she had a preview there and it was stunning. So I really loved her color. Um, yeah, so highly recommend. I mean, I haven't knit with it yet, but the colors were all beautiful. So I'm really excited to wind that up. And then I just got some barber cords in orange and a retractable tape measure. <laughs> Those two notions were on my list. Um, so I was able to get everything I wanted. I was able to get a sock yarn, different fiber, a spindle, barber cords, and a retractable tape measure. And both of these have already come in so handy for my tank top. I'm so grateful for them both. Uh, they're very, they're just very convenient. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. I would love to hear about your experiences at your first fiber festivals. Kathy from Dreamweavers Fiber Arts, she, she was saying that, oh, this is a great first one to come to because it's not so big. She said she was just at the Maryland, Maryland Sheep and Wool Fiber Festival. I don't know exactly what it's called, but the giant one that just happened a few weeks back in, um, yeah, she's saying that one is much larger. So I'm glad I was able to go to this one. It was a lot of fun. But I have been waiting to try and spin this yarn. And so I'm probably gonna reposition the camera so you can see a little bit better. You'll probably be farther away from me, so I hope it won't change the sound too much. But um, I'm, I've been waiting and I'm ready. Okay, so I have her book right next to me. The, the Respect the Spindle book open to the Park and Draft page. I read it a lot. I've seen How to Park and Draft, so I don't think I'll... Hopefully I don't need it too much, but it's here open in case I do. So if you can't hear me too well, I'll like play some music over this part. Pitch is already there. I don't even know what hand to hold this in. Do this face. No, clockwise. She went clockwise. Two hands, that's what I need. Oh man. Oh shoot. <laughs> hey, it's working. Some more twist, I think. There we go. Park it. It is hard to draft out. It's like it's already.
don't know how to get it to spin longer, I wonder. Okay, I think that my issue is that I much in the fiber in the drafting area and so I think it's like starting to twist that drafting fiber when I'm not ready for it to be twisted. That's my limited knowledge guess. getting so tight down here. twisted down at the base. <laughs> How do I get it off? I mean, I think she showed me. She said she doesn't do anything fancy like the butterfly. She just goes for it. She just wraps it around her fingers. Get the half hitch off. There we go. Oh, hers is much thinner. So. Oh, she went over one, under two, over one. No. She's like, I just do this. Over one, under two. I don't know how the, my yarn so close to the spindle is so much more tightly spun than my yarn far away. I don't know how to help that. Which really is easy. Well, here she goes. I can't spin anymore without needing more fiber. <laughs> so that's 
one thing I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna look up. Why am I yarn is both so tightly spun next to my shaft and loosely spun up high? Probably just means more twist, right? Um, that was fun. Hopefully, I can get more clips over the next few days if I get a little better. But thanks for being here. I'm um, just really grateful for all of you that have subscribed and commented. It's been like I've, I feel like I've met new friends virtually, but um, you've all been so kind and I'm having a blast on here. So I'm really grateful. Thank you so much for so many of you subscribing and yeah, see you in just a few weeks. Have a great rest of your June. Bye.